It's Monday, January 24th, 2011, and welcome to Streamline News, brought to you by SwimOutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. A lot of swimming took place around the world last weekend. Let's start with the fast, in-season long course times at the French International. Camille Lacour, who had come within a fingernail of the world record in the long course 50 and 100 backstrokes last summer, posted a 24.88 in the 50 and 53.45 in the 100, with countryman Jeremy Stravius just a tenth or so behind in both. Camille Mufa posted some fast times in the 200 and 400 freestyles with a 158 flat in the 200 and 4071 in the 400. The French showed the world that 49 seconds in season is no big deal in the 100 freestyle as four swimmers put up times in the low 49s. Elaine Bernard led the field with a 49-14 while Stravius was second in 49-36 and Fabien Gillot was third in 49-42. Yannick Agno was the fourth swimmer under 50 seconds last weekend with a 49-32 in prelims. Agno later scratched from finals. Bernard also posted a 22-26 to win the 50 free with Gillot and Agno right behind him. And we've got more recaps from the French International on our world channel at SwimmingWorld.com. Over here in the States, some of the top college teams were in dual meet action. The meet between the Stanford and Arizona men's teams on Friday held the promise of being the closest meet of the weekend, and they followed through on that promise with the Cardinal beating the Wildcats with a score of 155 to 143. Stanford and Arizona were evenly matched in the pool, but Stanford's diving outscored Arizona 26 to 10. Austin Staub won two events in his return to competition, putting up a 137-7 in the 200 free and 47-9 in the 100 fly. The Stanford women had no problem defeating the Arizona women's team, winning 12 of the 14 events. The Cal Berkeley men's and women's teams came down to Tucson on Saturday to race the Wildcats, with the Bears winning both meets. The men savored the victory a little bit more as they hadn't beaten Arizona in a dual meet since 2006. The top swim of the day was without a doubt Nathan Adrian's 42-61 leadoff leg on the 400 freestyle relay. But other great swims included come from behind wins for Arizona freshman Matt Barber in the 500 and 1000 freestyles and Cal sophomore Tom Shields won the 100 fly as well as the 200 fly just 20 minutes after winning the 200 free. On the women's side, Tucson native Caitlin Leverance used the hometown crowd to her advantage winning the 100 and 200 breaststrokes as well as the 200 IM for Cal. Alyssa Anderson of Arizona won the three toughest events on Saturday, the 500 free, 1,000 free, and 200 fly. Auburn is still riding high after beating Texas in the pool two weeks ago and Oregon on the football field. The Tigers used that momentum to overcome Florida's men's and women's teams on Friday. Emily Boss of, Arizona, of Auburn had two of the top swims of the meet, winning the 100 back and touching out Florida's Teresa Crippen for the win in the 200 backstroke. This was the final meet of the season for, Arizona, for Auburn before the SEC championships, while Florida will take on Tennessee and Indian River this weekend. We've got a full list of college swimming recaps on SwimmingWorld.com. Over in Australia, FINA rules are keeping Libby Trickett out of the Aust Australian World Championship trials in April, but a story in the Australian newspaper over the weekend hints that Trickett could earn a trip to Shanghai and compete in Worlds in a relay. Aussie national team head coach Lee Nugent wants to adjust the selection procedures for the 400 and 800 freestyle relays so Trickett can make her international debut sooner than originally planned. Instead of filling the six spots on the free relays at the April trials, Nugent is looking to pick only five swimmers in April with the six to be named after a special time trial on June 30th, one month after Trickett becomes eligible for competition. Nugent is quick to note that while the adjusted selection procedures was created to help Trickett get a spot on the world team, he believes it will help the Aussie freestyle relays across the board. Australia has been loose with their selection procedures in the past. You'll remember that Ian Thorpe was able to win his spot on the 400 free for the 2004 Olympics after false starting at the trials. All he had to do was swim a certain time in a meet later that year. France has also instituted some crazy selection procedures in the past, but the French Swimming Federation has not said if they'll create a loophole that will allow Laura Manadou a chance to reclaim her world championship titles from 2007. Like Trickett, Manadou is not allowed to race until June 1st. 
Construction of the water polo venue for the 2012 Olympics started last week in the same vicinity as the venue for swimming and diving. The water polo venue will be smaller and its roof will be made from recycled plastic. It, al it is also expected to be torn down at the conclusion of the Olympics, whereas the swimming venue will remain. Construction of the swimming venue continues with the spectator seating almost complete and there are 550 days left until opening ceremonies. That's Streamline News for today. Thanks for watching.